To start this taper, I'm going to use a curved motion with the clipper at the nape of the neck. I'm going in with a number two right at the base of the nape of the neck. I'm showing you a really low line here. I don't want to go any higher than that with the clipper because above that I'm going to cut with the scissors. It's important that you go in with the teeth right at the base of the hairline. So the clipper teeth must get in and catch all of the hair. This is going to give us a nice clean canvas that we can make our first straight line with a zero. Now when I say straight line, I'm going up higher than the hairline and my line is going to be completely straight and it's going to spread out from that straight line. This is what's going to give nice definition at the sides of the taper. Now that I have a nice clean straight line, I can go in with the quarter blade. That's the lever half pushed down, it's 0.75 mil. And I'm just going to work up a little bit higher than that and this makes the stubble slightly longer than what was below it. It's a quick process and as soon as I've done that I can go on to the half that's the lever all the way down which makes the blade one and a half millimeters. So now we're getting into a slightly longer stubble again. Now it's hard to tell in the video that this is getting longer but it's really going to pop. I am moving the blade quite a lot because I want to get it really clean. This is what I call scrubbing the blade. Now let's have a look. How many times do I scrub the blade in one spot? And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want it to be as clean as possible. 34 times in one spot. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I catch every single hair. And by going over it many times, I'm sure that it's completely clean. So now with the number one guard on, slightly higher again, not much higher, just a little bit. Remember, we need to blend into where that number two was, just around about the occipital bone, which was um, where I had that low line earlier. You can see the pattern forming here. Now I've got the lever down on the one. We're getting slightly longer. And I don't know if you can see, but it is beginning to start to look like a taper. It's starting to look like it's blending in from nothing into something. Now I've switched to the one and a half guard, which is four and a half millimeters. And I'm just working up a little bit more. That is the guard that is just below a two. And remember, that's what I debulked with at the start. I took the bulk away uh, at the beginning. At the side here, I'm just going in with a half. So that's with the lever down on the bare blade. And all I want to do is create a little stubble on the sideburn. This is, I don't want to go too high and I need to be really careful not to go into the arch around the ear. I want to keep that long and I'm going to show you why I want to keep it long because to define and make sure that your taper pops, you need to have long hair in some areas. So in with the number two now again, and I'm just going to debulk this area. Now remember just above the ear there, I didn't want to um, take too much hair away. You can see the angle that I'm taking here. I'm going in and gliding away from the head so that I don't go and take away too much hair above the ear. But just on that arch, just above the ear, this will be the length that I require for my taper. You can see how low I've been again there. So I've just kept that shape. Here I go with the one and a half guard now. I'm just working in. There's not a lot of work to do on the sides. So I'm just kind of blending that in there from the half into the two. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to close the lever now on that and just go in a little bit more uh, with the one just to polish out any lines and a little bit with the one and a half at the back there. By the way, do you do many tapers? Put a comment down below. I'd love to know if this is the kind of work that you like to do. On this area on the temple here, I'm going to form what some people call a C cup. So it's basically a curve from the point of the temple and I want to form an unnatural curve. This isn't the way that the hair grows, but it really makes the taper pop out. Whoever invented the C cup, what a genius, because I think it looks really cool. Around the ear now, look, this is not a, a good shape around the ear. I want to form a beautiful little curve around the ear as well. So I'm just using the very corner of the clipper to nibble away at this and try and make it in a curve. Now, this is my own artistry here, and you can see 
that is not a curve. So I need to work on that. I need to make this more curvy. So I'm just going to try and make more of a curve there. And then in behind the ear, we need to try and uh, refine that a little bit. So using the corner again, watch, you see how there's like a little bit of um, thin hair just above the ear there. I need to be careful not to touch that at all because any hair that I take away from there is going to make a point above the ear. Okay, and my favorite bit. I love doing this because it really frames the taper. A straight line from the back of the ear down towards the nape of the neck and then just clean all that away. Now, what we've been doing so far is making this sort of fade, this, this graduation from short hair into longer hair and it's in a dense space, you know, we don't have a big area. But this is what really makes it pop is when you do these really bold, clear lines, it really adds to the artistry of a taper. Now, we need to connect this hair in at the back and that big lump of hair is actually coming from higher up and reaching down. So what I need to do is take some sections from higher up and work my way down with the scissors. So there you go, I'm gonna start taking that away. And as I work my way down, scissor over comb, more hair will come off and then eventually less hair will come off because I'm just taking that lump away. Now, this technique is fundamental. If you watch the channel, you know how much I love to use this particular technique. It's scissor in, comb underneath, you flip the comb over, put it underneath, catch the hair and cut away. Now, each time you move down to the next section, you should see the hair above. As I get down towards where my taper was, where, the, where I was with the number two, less hair will come off because I've already cut it with the number two. A little bit of polish in there. And I'm gonna step over here and again, now I'm working at a slight angle. What I'm doing is I'm following the direction of that line that I made, which followed the natural contours of the head. And I'll work my way down on this side as well. Can you see it beginning to come together? Now we still have to tie in quite a lot. There's the top and the sides to do. And I want to show you how I'm going to style this as well at the end. But we're beginning to get somewhere. I'm leaving the hair on the crown because as far as I'm concerned, the length of that is absolutely fine. At the sides, again, scissor over comb and I'm just gonna work my way down towards my taper around the edges. So more coming off from the middle as I work my way down my sections and less towards the bottom. I'll just double check to make sure these areas are connected and there's no long hair sticking out. I love how natural it is to cut hair like this, just resting the hair on the comb rather than putting it under tension with your fingers. It allows the hair to be itself. It's relaxed, it's natural. That's the way it's gonna fall. It's the way it's gonna lie. And that's why I like to cut hair this way a lot. When you get to the temple, it's a small area, so only take a small amount off. I'll nip over to the other side here and trim this down. And I just want to say to you while you watch this, if you want to learn more from me, I do have courses on Udemy, and I'll leave links for my Udemy courses in the description below, as well as the tools that I've been using today. I'll leave descriptions for that down below as well. And I also want to say just a heads up to the new members that have joined the channel recently. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate you becoming members on the channel and I do want to give you barbers something back for the support and I've been putting out some exclusive video for you and I'll be continuing to populate that area with more content as time goes by. On to the top and what I'm going to do is wet it all down and then I'm going to cut a profile section that's getting longer towards the front. The reason for this is because I don't actually think any length needs to come off the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this section all the way through the middle. And that will be my guide when I cut all the subsequent sections going from the back towards the front. So at the front here, not taking anything off. Now, I've got my profile section. I should be able to find my profile guide on the red dot in these sections that I'm going to work from the back to the front. Now, fingers in. Pinch the hair as you drag the comb through the hair and comb it out of the way. 
and then when you pick it up nice and clean, you should be able to see just in the middle the short hair from the profile section, and that's your guide. So as you're working your way forwards, take each subsequent section, you'll be able to see a little bit of short hair in the middle of it. So I'm gonna pick this up. That section is a little bit fat to me, and so when I picked up, I think I'm actually gonna pull some hair away from behind it. That's a technique you can use if your section is too thick, then you can pull some hair away from the back of the section with the hook of the comb. So let's pick this up. I can see in the middle, oh, I'm leaving that one. Right, back in, I don't know why, I think that was maybe not clean enough for me. So I'm picking up another section. Okay, I can see the short point in the middle, cut right across, and this is evening it up. Now you'll notice I'm not taking a huge amount of hair off as I'm working my way forward. And the reason for that is, well, as I said, I didn't think it needed a lot off, but it does need some off. Whenever you have colored hair, for instance, with uh, like a peroxide, um, the hair does get damaged. So it doesn't do it any harm at all just to take the ends off. You can get split ends. What happens when the hair is colored is that it, um, loses some of the cuticle off the side. Now the cuticle is like a scale-like covering on the hair. It's on the outside of the hair. And when your hair feels rough, that's probably because the cuticle is damaged. Okay, onto the side, where those red dots were, we, that will be where the short hair is from the middle. Although it's gonna be hard to find because I didn't take very much off from the top. So not a huge change uh, in the length from the sides to the to the middle, um, it's a little bit. To be quite honest, most of the time when I'm cutting like this, I probably wouldn't cut with a guide. Um, I would just know as I work through my sections that I'm gonna be taking about two or three millimeters off of the entire top. If you feel confident cutting that way, just cut that way, you know, you know what you're doing. You don't have to have a guide all the time if you know what you're doing or if you feel happy with what you're doing, um, leave the guide out just take two or three millimeters off every section that you pick up working from the back to the front. On the side, I'm just gonna double check to make sure that I have this connected correctly. I have already scissor cut the side and the top, but I'm just having a one last look over. Not really much to change there. And I can pull this side down now and I can make a bunch of sections from the middle there where the red dot is. That's where the short hair should be from the middle that I've already cut. And I'll begin working my way forward from there. It's always at this time of year that I hear a lot of people are starting college. Are you starting college just now? Let me know. Tell me what stage you're at or if these videos are helpful for you, I would like to know. And what would you like to see in future videos? please put a comment down below because those types of comments are extremely useful for me when I'm shaping future content. I like to know what does the viewer want to watch and I'll try and make it for you. So I'm tying in the other side here and I'm just double checking. Now remember I've already cut this so it's just a little bit of refining that I'm doing here. At the front there's not a huge amount to be done. I'm going to go over I'm going to make sure that there's no loose hairs and I'm using the comb just as a straight line, so I put the comb underneath and I drag the fringe out, check for any loose hairs at all, anything that I can find that doesn't sit right. It all looks pretty good to me, and I'm pretty happy with the way the fringe is sitting. So all I need to do now is get this hair dried off, and once it's dried off, I'm just gonna go around the edges with the foil shaver, just to try and get it a little bit cleaner. Anything you can do to make it a little bit cleaner, do it, you know, finishing's important. And for styling, I'm using Hair Bond Super. It is actually my favorite product. I don't earn commission for selling Hair Bond Super. It's just a product that I love. I love the smell of it. It works really well. So here was the before. Now let's take a look at the after. I really like how it blends seamlessly from nothing into something. And I think it really pops on dark hair, actually. That really makes a difference. Tell me what you think. Do you like it? Hit me with any comments at all and I will see you again in my next video. Music